Okay, representing enthalpy change. We do this in two ways, one by thermochemical equations and secondly with potential energy diagrams. So you may recall that the energy term is on the left side of the arrow in an endothermic reaction, you'll see here, and that the energy term is on the product side or the right side of the arrow in an exothermic reaction. So a thermochemical equation is a balanced equation that includes an energy term. So here's an example. The molar enthalpy for the synthesis of ammonia is provided. 92.4 kilojoules per mole of ammonia is released during the synthesis of ammonia. Write a thermochemical equation. Okay, so start with a balanced equation for the synthesis of ammonia. Write that down and then check back with the video. Okay, so hopefully your balanced equation looks like this. Now, 92.4 kilojoules per mole is released, released from the system. Is this an endo or exothermic reaction? Hopefully thinking exo. If we were to write that molar enthalpy as a given value, then we would need to write that delta H equals negative 92.4 kilojoules per mole of ammonia. Okay, now to, in order to then put the energy term into the equation, this energy term, which we're going to show up on the right side of the arrow, needs to be in kilojoules. So that's actually kilojoules. Um, I better put a subscript here on my delta H, so I'll just use an R. <clears throat> and so in my description, my molar enthalpy symbol, delta H, R, there's, there's an R there for reaction. So now, what is the enthalpy change when two moles of ammonia are produced? So the enthalpy change for two moles. Knowing that molar enthalpy, we can take the negative 92.4 kilojoules per mole and multiply by the number of moles. You'll notice that our units cancel nicely here and we can compute the answer. Okay, negative 184.88 kilojoules. That looks a little bit messed up there. Okay, so you can see that I've rewritten the balanced equation here and now I'm going to put the 184.8 kilojoules into the equation. The negative is telling me that the energy was released, which corresponds to the original information. And so that energy term needs to show up on the right side or the product side of the arrow. And so I can fill that in 184.8 kilojoules, 184.8 kilojoules. Okay, if this reaction had been an endothermic reaction, then the energy term would have been written on the left side of the arrow delta H would have been calculated as positive because the molar enthalpy would have been positive. So just heads up for that when you're looking at different examples. Okay, potential energy diagrams. Oh, and I suppose I should also make the point. You can also write the balanced equation and so you can also write the balanced equation and then simply state the enthalpy change at the end or the right side of that equation, the far right side. When you do that, make sure that you include the positive or the negative indicating whether energy has been absorbed or released. Okay, so second method of representing these enthalpy changes is in a potential energy diagram. You have already seen these introduced in earlier uh, lessons. The y-axis is labeled potential energy and the horizontal axis, the x-axis, reaction progress. That just means as the reaction proceeds. So we have our reactants. Uh, remember, this is the origin, so this value here would be a lower potential energy than this one up here. So if we have our reactants lower in potential energy than our products, remember lower energy is more stable, right? then as the reaction progresses, if the products are now higher in potential energy, 
or less stable, then a certain amount of energy must have been absorbed by the system. And so the difference here you, is delta H, the enthalpy change, which is positive in this scenario. The reverse of that would be if the reactants are higher in potential energy compared to the products. The difference in potential energy between the reactants, the products and the reactants is still delta H, but you'll notice in this case that the products have a lower potential energy, and so if you're subtracting the lower value, let's say this is 2 and this is 50, 10 minus 50 would give us a negative delta H. So which of these diagrams represents an endothermic reaction and which one represents an exothermic reaction? Well, there's two clues here. Hopefully you're thinking endothermic on the left. When delta H is positive, the system is absorbing energy overall. And you can see that in the increase in potential energies from reactants to products. And vice versa, we have an exothermic reaction represented on the right. These potential energy diagrams will become more complicated as we introduce um, more and more elements of the theory. And so this is our basic, simple potential energy diagram that you're responsible for at this point.